The beautiful thing about this lovely work that I'm involved in, I've got to tell you guys, I'm a, a full-time psycho, sorry, psychic. <laughs> I work in this, in this beautiful business in a full-time capacity, and it's just crazy where life does lead you. Yes, I'm the eldest of four kids. I was uh, born and raised in a, in a little country town in New South Wales, and uh, mum and dad had no connection to spiritual work. It was never a part of my, my journey and my life. But I was the eldest one of four, I am the eldest one of four, and I, I'm different to everybody else, which is absolutely beautiful to see, um, because we're all different. But for me, I first became aware of my psychic gift when I was around about nine, ten years of age. Used to drive my parents nuts, because I'd, I'd tell them little things, and mum would go, what a load of rubbish, what a load of rubbish. But all the load of rubbish would come true, it would all come to pass, and she could never figure out how this all happened, and I didn't understand. So it was sort of stimulated a little bit in my childhood, because they didn't understand, and I didn't understand, so I just sort of zipped my mouth. And it wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I moved to Sydney, and I had this, this yearning, this, this build-up with inside of me. I thought, I've got to talk to people about their life. I just know that when I meet someone, I've just got to talk to them. I've just got to share something. Because I just, someone's talking to me. Someone, I, I didn't know who it was. I, I call it the knowing. I used to just get this knowing. Anyway, so I trundled along like that. I was given a book called Reaching for the Other Side by Dawn Hill. That book changed my life. It became my Bible for two years. And remember, as Kawina so beautifully said, back in the early 80s, no such thing as the internet. All information was uh, passed via books. So for me, I got somebody gave me this book and said, oh, this might interest you. Oh my God, talk about manna from heaven. It, I just soaked it all in. And I just couldn't get over how this lady who was from Sydney, she was a medium, and it was just all about her stories and her journey. And that became my template, I guess, for what I based my own work on, which was very fledgling back in those days. And guess what? Exactly 30 years ago, my life changed forever in the most crazy, beautiful way. Some of you have heard the story, but many of you haven't, so I'll quickly share it with you and then we'll get into a little bit of fun. Um, <laughs> I was just uh, 22, 23 years old, uh, years of age, I guess, and um, I was doing readings from home. And word had got out about these young, this young guy doing these readings. And back in those days, guys, my readings, I would just hold people's hands, tune into their energy, close my eyes, and elicit my guidance from the universe that way. And that's how it came through. So I didn't know any, I didn't, I didn't read cards. I just had to touch people and, and I'd get the connection. You know, I was wired by Telstra when I was bored. I think I got a good connection. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it wasn't Vodafone. Anyway, uh, and, uh, and beautifully for me, that's how it worked. Well, guess what? I was begging the universe to send me a teacher. I thought I need a teacher. I need a mentor. I need someone to share. Who can help me with this work? I don't know anyone. I just moved to Sydney. Well, I, said, I begged to the universe and said, please send me a teacher, send me a guide. Well, you'll never believe who they sent me. I was expecting somebody like Dumbledore out of Harry Potter, you know, <laughs> like the wizard, the, the wise man, with the scrolls of knowledge and wisdom and the flowing robes and the big pointy hat and the long grey beard. I thought, where is this man? Where is the master? Where's the teacher? Well, guess what? A lady rang up and said, uh, can I come and have a reading off you? I said, sure. Well, she turned up to my doorstep, didn't she? Knocked on the door. Bang, 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 I opened the door and here was, I didn't know it, but here was my grand master, my grand teacher who was about to change my life forever. And there she stood. Never judge a book by its cover. Because Denise, God love her, embodied uh, the true essence and elements of a, an Ocker Aussie lady from the western suburbs of Sydney. And she was a, a, a mum, she had a couple of kids, she was a buxom lady, had a hair pulled back and a bun, and she had three loves in life. She loved spirituality, she loved Winfield Blue cigarettes, and she loved Tic Tacs, and that's what she lived on. And the crazy thing, I'm, I'm, I opened the door and she's there, hello love, I'm here for the read. <laughs> And she said, hang on, love, hang on, hang on. <laughs> she put the cigarette out, I'm thinking, anyway. Anyway, I said, come in, come in. So in she came, I sat down, and of course I did the reading for her. She was happy with the reading. And I said, um, so, do you have any questions? And she sat there and she said, love, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And I thought, tell me what? And she said, oh, you're not going to be reading like this much longer. And I said, oh, I said, look, I know I'm not that good because I've only just started. <laughs> and she said, love, I'm not talking about that, love. I'm not talking about that. I just got told you're going to be reading flowers. And I went, <laughs> I said, plain or self-raising? I'd never heard of such a crazy thing. She said, no, you silly bugger, not the, no, not the flower you cook with, but the flower's out of the garden. I said, what? She said, love, it's flower reading, <laughs> reading, flower reading. Anyway, she said, come outside, I've got something else to tell you. And I said, oh, okay. So I went out to the front. She said, can I have a cigarette? I said, yeah, we're standing on my front veranda. You're going to love this. She lit up the cigarette. She went, 
Tuesday nights, you better come round to my place. I run a healing group. A healing group. <laughs> 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 I felt like saying, well, do we start at you with you? You know? I run a healing group every Tuesday night. You're going to love it. She said, you like, we do flower reading there. And I said, what? And I said, and I said to my ex-wife, oh, I was married, and I said to my ex-wife, I said, Lisa, do you want to come with me? She said, the woman's a train smash. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and I, you've got to love this, guys. I went over to her place. It was a Tuesday night. I sort of knock, knock on the door. I thought, God, I didn't know what, it was, what to expect. Oh, how far out. It was so hilarious. There must have been about 12 people sitting on the floor with all these flowers and more bags and everything in the middle. And guess what? Out of the 12 people, I'd say six of them were chain smokers and I could barely see any of them. There was a fog. I'm almost tempted to ask, um, are you a spirit or a real person? I could just see the silhouette in the fog until I took a draw of the cigarette. I could see the end of the cigarette lighting up. Oh, anyway, we went, up, we, went, we went back out the back and out the back was where they did the healing room. Now the funny thing was, just to tell you quick, I'm cutting a long story short, uh, we got into the, uh, the flower reading and I have to tell you guys, I picked up that first bag, that first flower, thought what the hell is all this? And guess what I got? Nothing. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. And I sat there for like a few minutes and thought I got nothing. So I put the bag down, I said, Denise, um, can you show me another modality that I can learn please? Flower reading doesn't work for me. And she's sitting there with a cigarette, she said, laugh, she said, just be bloody patient, will ya? <laughs> Said they're talking to you, they're talking to you, but you're not listening. I said, no, I'm not listening, honey, I'm listening, I'm trying to listen. She said, it's all right, love. She said, see you next Tuesday night. I said, okay. So I went back the next Tuesday night. This went on and on and on. And the funny thing was, we're sitting there, and I, every Tuesday night I was like a little snippet of this. And I said, honey, this is it's way too slow for me. She said, love, you're coming on nicely. You're coming on nicely. You're coming on nicely. Now, sadly, Sadly, Denise has long since departed this beautiful planet of ours. She passed away about eight years ago. I think the Winnie Blues got her in the end. But guess what? She was one of Sydney's finest trans mediums. And there's something that she was a real thing that she smashed with me was the belief of, you know, <laughs> that you had to be the purest of the pure of the pure to do this work. Well, just like our beautiful friend Kawina said, guess what, guys? I have a little history as well, you know, and uh, I've uh, enjoyed my life. And you don't have to be this om and beautiful and perfect being to be um, almost hand selected by spirit to say, okay, I'll choose you and I'll choose you. Do you know what? It, that's a whole other journey in itself. But for me, it was just that once I started to trust, this is a journey of trust. This is an absolute journey of trust.